a preaching professor who used to say, keep a tablet and pen right by your bed, so if you get an idea in the middle of the night, you could write it down. And that approach never worked for me, because I'd always forget to have the tablet or the pen or my glasses close by. So I developed a different system where I'd just wake Louise up and say, will you write this down for me? (laughs) After multiple bruises, I uh, gave up on that system. She does not like being awakened in her sleep. So anyway, today we're going to focus on a couple of different songs as we go through the message. This message is simply called Because of Jesus. So the coming of Jesus to this world has changed everything. Because of Jesus, our lives will never be the same. Just remember that. Because of Jesus, our lives will never be the same. So one Christmas carol that I want us to focus in on today is, O Come All Ye Faithful. This song has been a Christmas carol in close to its present form for 300 years. The words were written way back in the 13th century. They were written in Latin. We're not sure who the original author was. Some people think it was St. Bonaventure. Some people think it was a Portuguese king. Some other people think it was a group of monks who wrote the lyrics. But whoever wrote the lyrics back in the 13th century, it was first put to music and began to be sung as a Christmas carol in the mid-1700s. And since then, it's become one of the most popular carols in the entire world. It became popular because it's easy to sing and it has this great imagery in it. It's been translated into every language in the developed world. So I want us to focus in on the opening line of the song. It says, O come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. When I look at that opening line, I see faith, joy, and victory. Because of Jesus, we choose faith. Faith is like trust. We need to decide who we're going to trust in this life. You don't just wake up some days having faith and some days not having faith. Faith is something you need to choose each and every day. Our faith is a response to what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. In Galatians 2, the Apostle Paul wrote, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then because of Jesus, we choose joy. We don't live life by our feelings where we wake up some days feeling joyful and then some other days we wake up feeling grumpy. Joy is something that we choose. Think of a believer who's paralyzed and spends every day in a wheelchair. Do you think he wakes up every day just feeling joyful? No, joy is something that you choose. I don't think the Apostle Paul woke up in prison feeling joyful. Joyful was something he had to choose. He fixed his eyes on Jesus, and then he was able to be joyful. Hebrews 12 says, Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame, Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, and then you won't become weary and give up. So when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we see he's able to endure the cross because of the joy that was waiting for him. We need to choose joy as well. And then because of Jesus, we have the victory. The song says, we come faithful, we come joyful, and we come triumphant. Because Jesus has already won the victory. 1 Corinthians 15, sin is, the, sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's great to be able to live your life knowing that Jesus has already won the victory. You know, the Minnesota Twins won the World Series back in 1991. If somebody gave me a DVD of those World Series games, I would enjoy watching those games knowing that the outcome has already been decided. If I watched a game or two that we lost, it wouldn't bother me that much because I know that we ultimately won the title. And we can live the Christian life in a similar way. We may have some discouraging setbacks here and there, but we ultimately know who wins the final victory. We've read the final chapter, Satan is defeated. And Christ is victorious. 
You know, I love this time of year because you hear stories about people being generous, and I especially love the stories where people choose to be anonymous as they help out people who are in need. I read a story where a few days ago, an anonymous donor donated $18,000 to pay off the lunch debt for all the students in a school district. It seems that people's generosity increases this time of year as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we choose to be generous. 2 Corinthians 9, the Apostle Paul writes, God will generously provide all you need, and then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And later in that chapter, he says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And when we see how generous God was in sending his only son, his generosity inspires us to be generous. When you look at your family, does your family have any Christmas traditions that are kind of unusual? Drew Dick said, growing up, my family always ate pizza on Christmas Eve. There was no meaning behind it. As far as I'm aware, no Italian food options were present at the first Christmas. But every year on the 24th, my family was consuming piping hot Hawaiian pizza. Drew said, a friend recently told me about a tradition her parents have. It's a little odd, but mostly just awesome. Before Christmas, they, along with 15 friends, go to a Denny's restaurant, and they have a meal together. They each bring $100, and then they let the waitress keep the change. Drew said, I shared this tradition on social media noting that $100 isn't a big sacrifice for each person, but it makes a huge difference for the waitress. One person objected. He said, well, what do you mean it's not a huge sacrifice? They have to eat at Denny's. (laughs) (laughs) But think about their tradition. Let's say there were 15 of them, and each of their meals cost $20. That would leave an $80 tip from each person, so that waitress would get a tip of around... $1,200. Maybe the waitress is a single mom who's working two jobs to support her kids and she had to work on Christmas Eve. Do you think their generosity might make a difference in her life? You know, God's generosity in sending his son leads us to be generous with other people. So let's not make the mistake of thinking that we can only be generous with money Maybe you can hardly keep up with the bills in your own life right now, so it's hard to be generous financially, but you can still be generous with your time. Think of the difference you can make in another person's life if you take the time to go visit someone who's very lonely. Your generosity will make a difference. And then because of Jesus, walls get broken down and people come together in peace. When you read through the New Testament, you find that there was a lot of hostility between the Jews and the Gentiles, but Jesus changed all that. Jesus wants to break down walls and bring people together in peace. In Ephesians 2, it says, You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. So because of Jesus, walls get broken down. People come together in peace. Have you ever looked at a picture of two people and thought, those two people just don't belong together? You know, that happened to me when I was a teenager in the 70s. Two people came together to sing a Christmas song, and I remember thinking this has to be about the strangest combination of two people coming together to sing a song that I can imagine. And I just remember thinking, if God can bring these two people together, then he can bring just about anybody together. Here's a picture of the first guy. How many recognize him? Bing Crosby, right? White Christmas and all that good stuff. Here's the second guy that joined him for the duet. Anybody remember him? David Bowie, a rock and roll singer. So this is a video of the song they sang as a duet back in 1977. The video is a little bit grainy because this is from the 70s. 
but I want you to listen to the lyrics as God brought these two people together. So Bing Crosby and a rock and roll singer. At the end of the song, these are the lyrics that they sang. I pray my wish will come true for my child and your child too. You'll see the day of glory, see the day when men of goodwill live in peace, live in peace again. Peace on earth can it be. So again, God breaks down walls, brings people together in peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he's still breaking down walls today. So as you get ready to celebrate his birth, this is a good time to ask yourself if there are any walls that need to come down in your life. Are there any walls that need to come down in your life? Is there any person you need to forgive? Parents, remember that you are trying to model Christ-like attitudes to your kids. Will your kids watch you carry a grudge this Christmas, or will they see you modeling forgiveness? So Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he wants to break down walls. Make sure that you're an agent of peace. And then because of Jesus, we press on through difficult times. 1 Peter 4.19 says, Keep on doing what is right. Trust your lives to the God who created you, for he will never fail you. Let's remember Christmas can be a real difficult time for many people. Some families have financial problems, others serious health problems or relationship problems. Other families seem to get overwhelmed with grief as they think of celebrating Christmas without a loved one. And sometimes we encounter a problem that just doesn't seem to go away. Sometimes the answer doesn't come in the time frame that we wanted. But even in the midst of those times, remember that God has not left you. He's promised to be with you no matter what challenge you're going to face in this life. If you're suffering today, if you're facing problems that feel overwhelming, do not give up and don't lose hope. This scripture verse tells us to keep on doing what is right and to trust God, because he will never fail you. And then, because of Jesus, we know we have value. The birth of Jesus reminds us how much God loves us and how much he values us. 1 John 4, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So never, ever forget that you have tremendous value in God's eyes. God made you. He wants you to be part of his family. He showed how much he loved you by sending his only son to die on the cross so your sins can be forgiven today. Christopher Hertz tells this story. He says, For the last decade, I've been meeting with Father Larry Gillick for spiritual direction. He's one of the most perceptive people that I've ever known. He's a scrappy old Irish-American Jesuit priest. And sometimes as I'm leaving his office, he'll affectionately say, sometimes you just need a good butt kicking. He once told me the story of a visit he made to a local Catholic elementary school. And after sharing with a group of the students, a young girl, probably third or fourth grade, approached him and she struck up a conversation. And a few minutes into their discussion, a look of pure astonishment flashed into the student's eyes. Suddenly she blurted out, you're blind, which is true. Due to a sickness, he lost his sight when he was just a small child. And with genuine tenderness, Father Gillick responded, yes, that's not news to me. <laughs> but before he could say anything else, she quickly moved from shock to sadness. And she said, you don't know what you look like. And that profound statement from such a young person caught Father Gillick off guard. And before he could comment, she softly said, you're beautiful. And Christopher said, I'm deeply moved every time I think about that little exchange. It's a very human story in which many of us can find our own story tucked inside. Because when it comes to recognizing our value, many of us experience a version of blindness that keeps us from seeing ourselves for who we really are. 
So because of Jesus, I'll pray that you'll see the value that you truly have. Each and every one of us is beautiful in the eyes of God. And every one of us is loved by God, and we have value. When you go through life and people start treating you like garbage, it's easy to start thinking that you are garbage. But reject those lies and come back to God's truth. Because of Jesus, we know that we have value. So as we apply today's message, I want you to think about your testimony. How would you complete this sentence? Because of Jesus, my life has changed. How? Because of Jesus, my life has changed. How? Here are some possible ways you might finish that sentence. Because of Jesus, I know my sins are forgiven and I have a home in heaven. Because of Jesus, I have a hope and a peace that no one can take away. Because of Jesus, I have become a more forgiving person. Because of Jesus, I am now more generous with other people. Because of Jesus, I become a more loving parent. Because of Jesus, I care about others who are lost. Because of Jesus, I have a new respect for missionaries and the sacrifices they make on a daily basis. There are so many ways you could finish that sentence. How would you finish it for part of your testimony? We started this message by looking at the opening line of, O Come All You Faithful, and we're going to end this service by singing this as our closing song. Because of Jesus, our lives will never be the same. O Come, let us adore him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for how Jesus has changed our world and changed our lives. And right now, Lord, I pray that you'll help each one of us to reflect on how you have changed our lives. We are not the same people because of Jesus Christ. Your grace, your mercy, your hope, your peace, all of that has invaded our lives. And we are different people. We are changed people because of you. So, Lord, it's our privilege to come and worship you, to adore you. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're going to do in the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.